And action! And great, cut. We've gone as far as we can go with this Jedi fighting style, so we've upped the ante in this film to the max. When I first got the call from Rick, of course, like, it, like anybody would be, I was really excited. I was luckier than most. I managed to get to the ranch and talk to George and find out who was fighting who, so I kind of had a bit of a heads up and then got out here and started. One of the greatest pleasures I get is, is seeing that somebody can do something, even if they, they don't think that they can do it themselves and pushing them through it. Let's see if you, if you did it static. It is such uh, a cool move. So, you come down on your head, yeah. drag, drag, boom. Definitely know what we can so cut to in doing that, we know what's happening. Yeah. And you just... Yeah. Let's do that. Just do it real quick. And you've got to do it to such a degree where you don't have to think about it, because you're doing it so quickly, you can't really think about it. You, you, you're not going, OK, he's coming to my shoulder, and he's going to cut to my head. You've just got to, it's got to become fluid. And action! Good. We always test shoot everything ahead of time. One of the main reasons is that we never get onto a set mm. because they're knocked down and built as we go. So I get the blueprints from the art department. Go in there and the corridor just gets smaller. Or I can just put up a little marker at the end. Yeah. And we mark them out with tape on the floor in our rehearsal room. And we have to know when we're going through doors, we have to know when we're going to turn left and right. Turn over. To, to match the set, because otherwise you're turning straight into a wall. <laughs> so we test you everything just to make sure that when we get on the set for the first time, you know, it'll happen. Action. <laughs> we'll shoot all the stunts as well during those tests. So we don't do it well, we just make sure it's gonna work. It might be that those become digital stunts, and then those tapes are used as reference. Looks like a wire one. Is it? It is on, yeah, there's a rig thing. Doesn't look real. Or if we're, if we're doing the stunt in and out, and he's doing a digi-double in the middle, he can work out exactly how that's going to go for him. That's, that's right, but he's got to, when he does his second kick, comes up, he hits and he springs himself back. Yeah, we could maybe lift him if we're just doing the first bit from there. Yeah, that would work. Yeah? And then you can do the second bit. Fantastic. Uh -oh. So once we've, once we've test shot everything, I'll then edit it on my computer. It'll go to the ranch. It allows George to look at it. He can then, anything that he doesn't like, he can change. Let's not make this messy in front of the Chancellor. Uh, Nick's working out the choreography and filming it just with home video and sending it to us, so we're injecting this cut footage into our videomatic sequences at this point. So George can look at the progress of how the fight scene may eventually show up. <laughs> You got the job. <laughs> I've always tried to get a moving representation of what that storyboard should be. Sometimes we 
used bits and pieces of documentary film, sometimes we've done little stick figure animations, but it's really to create the story in a visual form that we can then relate to in terms of saying this is how long the sequence is going to be, this is the kind of shots we need, and it gives everybody, including the actors, a sense of what is going to happen and what they're trying to accomplish. It's very important for him to be able to use the test footage that he shot to develop what both Obi-Wan and Anakin are actually physically and emotionally going through. It was important to Nick that he installed the story uh, to the fight so that there, there was uh, an exchange of power. And my character's meant to be the chosen one and supposed to be you know, one of the better Jedis as, as far as fighting goes. And that was sort of, I think, a, a difficult thing to get around so that it didn't make one of us look substantially weaker than the other. And I think he kind of balanced it just perfectly. Hayden in this film has moved up to um, a level nine. He's gone past Obi. Now, the difference between a level 8 and a level 9 really is the dark side. You have to go through each level in order to attain the next level. And if you do it too quick, you're going to get in trouble. So that's how I work on his, you know, his downfall is going to be aggression. Obi is also aggressive. They're almost the same, those two, because they've learned, they've come up through the same way. Taught by Qui-Gon, Tyrannus, Yoda. It's the same line. They are sort of mirror images, but they, uh, they're certainly different. They just match each other perfectly. On this, there's much more action than in the previous two. I tried to get a load of stump people in. First of all, I get the sword fighter, so I was lucky enough to get Kyle rolling again, who I was double count Dooku on Attack of the Clones. I needed a good Palpatine double. Kyle brought a friend of his along called Michael Burns, who has been amazing. And then I needed to get a team of stunt riggers that run ahead of us on the stages, just because we never get any time, and they just make sure everything's going to happen. No matter how you do it in films, you're always using stunt doubles for certain amounts of action set pieces. The older actors, Christopher Lee and Ian and Yoda, it's more difficult for them to do the highly physical types of work. So you use a combination of stuntmen and the actors to create the sword fight in a way that is you know, realistic and looks good. And then occasionally, uh, the advantage we have now is that we can put digital faces on the stuntmen and we can go closer in on them. We don't have to sort of hide their face and everything the way we used to, and that's a, that's a huge advantage. But you still need uh, the stunt performer to do the work. One of the most difficult sequences we had was the fight sequence between Palpatine and Mace. It was always our idea to use the two stunt doubles to do the majority of the work, but George really was reluctant to do that. The thing of it is the fight has to be changed. It can't, you can't change Ian, you gotta change the fight. He wanted to be close up. He really wanted to be right in Mace's face and he really wanted to be on Ian. So there was confusion on the day that we actually began shooting. There are places in there where they're not fighting, where they just move in and stuff. I thought that's what we would do to fight. Well, I think we can do a digital face, but I don't think we can do it like, you know, in a waist shot. And virtually, Ian and Sam had to learn everything. Two shots, shots, shots. Okay, ready. <laughs> and he's coming in. Sam, he's moving in. I'm there. watching, baby. So back up. Yeah, my hand's going. All right. It was a testament to Nick again and his ability to be able to think on his feet and really be able to solve the problem. And we suddenly got the film back on track after about 30, 35 minutes of discussing what it is that we needed to do. All right, start. Ready. And action. <laughs> I mean, something happens to our actors when they work with Nick. He makes stunts fun for them, so there's no fear factor whatsoever. <laughs> Nick! Nick, you're supposed to hang on. <laughs> Sam, for example, I mean, he had to jump out of a window, and we were going to put him in a harness and everything else. Nick would turn around and say, what are you talking about? You're not going to have a harness. You're a star. You're lying. You're jumping out that window, and you're going to jump onto a stunt mat, and that's the way we're going to do it. And Sam said, yeah, OK, I like that. Yeah, fantastic. And that's all they did all afternoon. Sam just kept on jumping off the balcony and jumping right into the mat. They just have fun with it. And that's what Nick is able to do with all of our actors. He makes stunt work fun for them.
Oh my God, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> it's morning. Obviously, for the audience, they like it. They like the peril, so they like it to be real. On this movie, it looks like we're going to end up doing most of the stunts for real. When you have young actors like you and Hayden, uh, they can do most of their own stunts, they do most of their own sword fighting. They do do all those fights. They are that fast. And it's all them, ladies and gentlemen. It really is.